Hello my soccer universe, I decided to do the Premier League Eredivisie review next, although I just did the one from the midweek, but hey, seemed fitting to do so. Um, hope you like the background, I decided to have Liverpool, I got a little bit uh, tired, I, I was about to pull an Ajax jersey on, but yeah, um, it's still, I want to keep the teams up, up there, so it's either Chelsea or Liverpool, I decided on Liverpool this time around, because I, as I said, I got tired of Ajax. But the good news is I have this month of around seven jerseys coming, four of which are for this type of video, meaning Premier League and Eredivisie, so I'm quite excited about that one. What can we say for headlines here? Well, um, City gets a labored win, Arsenal and United, ooh, boring draw. And so uh, it is Liverpool, uh, Liverpool that actually maybe could potentially get back into title contention. You see already. The one thing we have to say though is Mohamed Salah scored one of the goals of the season there. I uh, also want to mention that Thomas Tuchel got his first win, and in the relegation battle there was a rather uh, eventful 2-2 draw. Uh, in the Eredivisie, we also had uh, this, basically a Super Sunday with. Uh, Feyenoord against PSV and AZ against Ajax in both games pretty clear winners and it's the um, two big city teams more or less of Rotterdam and Ajax getting uh, rather convincing wins and all that means is yeah, Ajax is gonna become champions again although technically they're not even defending champions but yeah but they're defending the non-defending you know what, what I mean, there was no championship awarded and I still remain Lask beat AZ, Lask beat uh, PSV last season, AZ beat Ajax, so I think the Dutch championship should have been awarded to Lask for 2019-2020. But that's not where we're going, we are looking now at the results from the weekend and it started with a true shocker, Everton losing at home to Newcastle, who had not won in a long time. 2-0 uh, at home. I mean, it took a while until the goals come, but then uh, Shelby assists Wilson in the 73rd and in, to in stoppage time again Callum Wilson getting a goal. And despite all, all the possession, uh, Everton looking rather, rather tame. Wolves really in trouble. Crystal Palace winning that, that one. Then Manchester City against Sheffield United. They got the early goal. Ferran Torres plays with Gabriel Jesus, who from short range can pull it in. Yes, they had the more possession, but Sheffield United uh, defended it well. And may I quickly say the jersey match, I mean, light blue against pink, it, it, that should be banned. Uh, it looks ridiculous. It absolutely looks ridiculous on the pitch. And I actually think that Sheffield United could have well worn the uh, red and white striped jerseys as well. But yeah, different stuff. Maybe Manchester City should have added a second, if not a third. However, very late, late on, Sheffield United also had a big chance to equalize, and that would have been some, something if they... I mean, they already got the points from United. Now they go again to Manchester and probably potentially could have stolen a point from Manchester City, but Manchester City stays on course. Uh, West Brom Fulham, as I said, it was a lively 2-2 draw. In the first half, it was all Fulham. They only get one goal, then uh, West Brom comes storming back, makes it 2-1, but uh, before the end, uh, Fulham can equalize. Uh, not as exciting, Arsenal United. I was actually glad it was at the same time was Leipzig against Leverkusen, and I chose that game because I really did not expect a good game there. And from what I saw from, from the highlights, yes, United, probably uh, towards the end especially, had the better of the game. But overall, I think that nil nil was kind of there, and it has to say, uh, Arsenal had also the biggest chance with once hit, 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 hitting the bar. But you know, it was a rather tame game all overall. Nothing that you could say about Southampton against Aston Villa, a game that I a little bit, um, uh, yeah. Regret not watching, but you know, I decided we are real against uh, Real Sociedad, and that was also all also fun, fun, fun to watch. Will will be my choice, but that was a game, and I, I again have to say it was Aston Villa waitress in black and I with the light blue pants. Mm, I, I really like like that blue. Open game, slight advantages, may, maybe in Villa and Grealish assist sparking the 441st to get the 1 0. What came then, especially late on, was an onslaught by Southampton. Then 1 1 was imminent, it never happened. No, it happened. However, then just 
by the butt of the Aston Villa, <laughs> of the Aston Villa defender putting uh, Ings offside here by just that much. I mean, this is, you gotta hate, you must hate this stuff. Because if you look at it on the, on the screen, you're saying, I, I'm not sure if this is offside. Anyway, it ends 1-0 for Villa, who after being beaten by Burnley really needed that one. Uh, speak, speaking of Burnley, uh, they give Chelsea the, um, uh, a 2-0 win, more, more or less I mean Chelsea, Chelsea fully deserved this with Aspilicueta getting the first and uh, Alonso getting the second, so both uh, wingers, uh, wingbacks uh, got that one. So found that in, in interesting. Leicester Leeds was another game that I a little bit regret uh, not watching. Yeah, you cannot win them all and you know pre the, the Premier League sometimes takes a little bit of a backseat for me because I know I can watch the highlights of all games in a nice compact format so, some, so, so sometimes when I'm not sure I choose other leagues yes I could also watch the highlights but it's such so, so convenient to record them and then watch the entire highlights and you are kind of in there this was a really really good game Harvey Barnes gives Leicester the lead and then uh, Benford assists Dallas in the 15th to immediately get the equalizer and then it was up and down with uh, both teams having chances. In the end it is Benford uh, who gives a lead with a great, um, you know, it was a great contact, he kicks up from his own half but then also a great finish gives them uh, the 2-1 uh, advantage Leicester relentlessly pressing to get the, e the equalizer they just don't get it and then Harris in the 84th after again Bam Bam for the assist uh, puts the game game away in a big win for Leeds and not so great win for, uh, not not a great result for Leicester who now maybe still top four but maybe going outside uh, we will see about that West Ham was in good shape and the game needed a lot of time to get going against Liverpool. Uh, similar to what Liverpool played against uh, Spurs in many ways. Again, I didn't see it, I just saw highlights. Uh, but it was then the resurgence of Mohamed Salah who without Sadio Mane suddenly gets in goal scoring form and what fine goals is going. I mean the first one was typically Salah goal where he has the ball on his feet and then just more or less, I don't want to say poke but it looked like it pokes it in, in, in internet when no one expected it. But the second one by Shakiri, a long ball just way past the center, the center line really hard to control and Salah with just the first, first touch has it down and then can put it in into it. That was an absolute stunning goal. Uh, I have seen it compared to the Bergkamp goal against Argentina in 98. Not quite there, but maybe in the near vicinity of that, that goal. It was, uh, it was an amazing goal and definitely one of the goals of the season. Although we have seen quite some great uh, goals on Don Belet and the one, was it Declan Rice, uh, West Ham, 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 Ham United. Uh, yeah, West Ham, I think Alea also. I mean, there, there were quite, quite a few goals. And then Gini Vinaldum puts the game away uh, in the 84th, making it 3-1, and Dawson only can pull, pull one back. And so uh, Liverpool kind of using a little bit United's weakness uh, there. Also Leicester falling to put themselves a little bit in contention. The less said about Spurs loss to Brighton, the better, I would say. And let's move on straight to the standings. It's City's league to lose. I've been saying this consistently. Yes, at the moment, it, they are four points ahead of Liverpool, three points ahead of United. But do you see the top first number? 20 games. They have one game in hand and that will put them at 47. And that is a decided, decided advantage that I don't really see City, especially in the current form, giving up. Leicester right there as well. And yes, they are only in fourth place now, but it is the top four. It is Manchester City, then we have United, Liverpool, Leicester. And I think those three teams are probably the ones that in the end might get into the Champions League. West Ham uh, is riding high, but I don't quite see it. Spurs is not uh, good, although they have a game in hand. And Chelsea, maybe under Tuchel, could launch some, 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 something. Then we have Everton, Aston Villa that will maybe go more for Europe than anything else. And Arsenal is already a long, long way out. So yeah, um, I think a top is decided. The Champions League spots also look rather, rather safe at the moment. And on the bottom, also, I think two places are gone. Uh, West Brom and Sheffield United, although I hear voices kind of saying, yeah, Sheffield United will make the escape. I don't see it. I even think it's uh, it will be hard for Fulham to make an escape there. Again, 
for Inge, we definitely need to just because we have so, such such an even table and you see actually Manchester City um, rise a little bit more above the rest there uh, and also doing quite quite well with the performance department so projection projected points meaning 2.2 points um, extended for a 38, uh, 38 season will give you 84 four points I expect at the moment that they get 81 points I'm gonna try to revise the model a little bit um, this week because I took the week off still locked down uh, trying to help with the girls because they have to do home homework home, but the lockdown will end soon so looking forward to that part too um, Everton and Aston Villa make a big boost in the adjusted standings because they have so they have games in hand um, on, the, on the bottom not much changes at, at the moment I'm also surprised you know that you see all the London teams uh, Spurs, Chelsea and Arsenal in there and you know just a month ago we said the Spurs maybe could do something and now Kane is out mm, they're going down uh, similar story in the expected standings where both where all three London teams will arise with Chelsea actually now being in fifth place but you see already it's um, Leicester holds still an advantage over Chelsea um, especially due to the points Chelsea because they have a pretty good rating up there. City having a stranglehold on first place. Liverpool actually now slightly favored over United. They were just not too long ago, they were even, but you know, with United losing that one, one point, Liverpool winning, it can change again, of, of course. So uh, Leicester slightly over Chelsea and then Spurs, Villa, Arsenal, West Ham. Ah, uh, the next ones for European spots where Everton actually, who looked good, is now a little bit on the outside low, low, looking in. On the bottom you see Newcastle above the line, Fulham, Sheffield United and West Brom rather, rather um, below the line and with distinct spots already. We have again two rounds and I again previewed the both rounds. I think the marquee matchup here is Spurs against Chelsea. Uh, note that United against Southampton is also a really, really interesting game. Uh, that is not a, uh, is, is, is a tricky tie for uh, United to negotiate. The um, uh, big boys, more or less, with City and Liverpool have okay um, draws. I mean, Burnley will not be easy and um, Brighton at home you should beat also but Spurs against Chelsea that looks rather rather intriguing I have to say though if I would have to choose with Liverpool and Brighton and Villa against West Ham I probably would go Villa against West Ham just saying but then on the weekend and I've been saying Liverpool Man City yes we have the big Liverpool Man City matchup um, probably that's the last chance for if you're a United fan or a Liverpool fan you need Liverpool to win that one to keep City at home and I know for United fans it's really hard to root for Liverpool I'm aware of that United actually playing against Ever Everton which is also not that easy Will against Arsenal maybe of in interest to uh, who is Leicester playing Wolves uh, also at Derby so yeah there are some inter interesting stuff but I think it all boils down to Liverpool against Manchester City and we know the last time it was a great first half but then it fizzled off in the second the second half Hopefully we'll get a better, better game this time because this time there's really some, something at stake. Manchester City could put Liverpool out of the title race and Liverpool basically is the last uh, chance. So I expect quite an intense game there. In the Netherlands, I said Super Sunday. Uh, first, first of all, Vitesse, who have been so bravely hanging in there. Now they lost in the midweek. Now they only manage a 1-1 against Valwijk. I think we can safely say... They're not gonna challenge for any uh, Dutch title and lead, uh, and maybe uh, Champions League and so on. Feyenoord had a great performance against PSV, which came more or less out of nowhere because Fe Feyenoord really took a beating uh, in the midweek. But in the seventh minute, Diemers already gives them one, and then Berghuis himself in the 25th, and then a great pass from Turnstra uh, into Linsen. There was just by a fraction, not on another side, 3 0 at, at the half. Sankara in the 56th puts for back, and then Daniel Marlin had a big one short, shortly after. If he puts that, that one is 3 2, and it might be shaky. But from that moment on, then Feyenoord kind of steadied the ship and could ride that one home. And Ajax also. Um, had an early goal by Sebastian Alea assist Anthony in the 14th. Um, and Ajax was in firm control. And again, I love those blue Ajax jerseys. Absolutely. 
uh, the uh, old dolls are ab absolutely great. And then uh, Alkmaar really had a few chances. Late in the first half, early in the second half, they probably should have gotten the equalizer. But when Tadej sits Klassen in the 60th, done. That killed killed the game off. Neres had had a goal. Uh, did did this a lot, but in, in the end, uh, Tadej sits him in stoppage time. And a rather emphatic 3-0 win that maybe was not really a 3-0. Uh, gotta be on us as well, but Ajax having it despite I never feeling them have, have having the greatest of season, they are winning this title rather comfortably. 96% they have a seven points uh, cushion over PSV. It will be really, really hard to pull them back. I think seven points if you're the best team in the league, if the best team in the league is seven point points ahead, it's usually uh, equal to the title. As it Vitesse is hanging near Feyenoord, um, and I said. Probably teams that are better than we tested, but they will not. Uh, they will. They will have a hard time even going into challenge uh, for maybe for the second Champions League qualification spot. Um, if we look uh, at the expected standings, it is a Z uh, that goes to third third spot, but uh, Ajax comfortably ahead of PSV, who is still comfortably uh, ahead of the rest. Uh, so yes, that's where this will go. We have only one run there, and now it's, you know, after Su 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 Sunday, it's a little bit harder. But PSV against Twente, that's not an uninteresting matchup. Ajax plays at home to Utrecht, yeah, so and so. Groningen against Feyenoord, maybe an interesting one too. But I think we uh, we had the big ones now, and there are big ones coming this month too. So um, it will remain interesting in the Netherlands, maybe for second spot, definitely not for first. I think Ajax is done. So, those are my few cents on what happened in these two leagues um, over the weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, drop a line below if you want to add something uh, to what I've been saying. And yeah, subscribe to my channel, we'll see more videos and I will see you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!